Hello everybody, how are you? Um, can you put your hand up if you have an Amazon account? Okay. And who has an Amazon Prime account? Okay. Who didn't have a smartphone two years ago? Tablet? Okay. Um, so, I'm in this for art because I've been making digital projects for probably about eight years. I've been a brand advocate for technology companies, mainly stateside. I work now as a collective, as a collective of three. We're all independent. I work with CJ, who uh, used to be a previous stage manager. manager. Works with XP Digital Forums. Um, together, we co-create various things. So I'm absolutely rubbish at scheduling. CJ is amazing at scheduling. I do all the technology stuff. CJ does the technology as well. CJ's partner is a fine artist. So we kind of, I was going to too many events and people going, love your energy, love the IT stuff, but I have no idea how to use it. So it was better for us to work as a collective so we can sort of overlap from each other. If you want to have a look at some of the stuff we've done, socialgandalf.com forward slash example. The Pie Street came about because for the first time ever, we have a piece of technology, a British made technology. I saw this little box and it was 35 called the Raspberry Pi. And I thought, I have to go and get one of those. As a technologist, I have to get one of these things and see what they're about. Um, for the first time ever in history, we now have a fully-fledged computer in a box for 30 quid, 35 quid. Amazing. That's never happened before. You could never buy technology that cheap. Um, so I thought, OK, I'll, I'll buy a couple of these. I, I, with some of the money that I made from selling a domain name to Twitter in 2012, which was a very surreal experience, um, I thought I'd, I'll buy some, some technology and I'll, I'll roll out two prototypes. So, one of the things about creative spaces is that um, they're, they're often coffee shops, uh, a lot of them in Nottingham were family run businesses, and I spent a good year in those spaces, and they, were, they, they became spaces that I was very fond of, and fond of to tell people to go and check out. Yeah. And for me, that's fundamentally what town centre spaces are for me. Is this, this, this family run, all in it together. They don't have to be in the high street. They want to be in the high street. They want to be part of the community. And I thought, I, how can I help them? Or they're not marketers, they're not designers, but they have a passion for doing something. They want to set something up on the high street. So I thought, how can I do something? So I put a, I bought a monitor, a decent monitor, an IPF stream, which basically means that from any angle you can kind of see the screen. It's not you have to see it straight on. Um, I bought the Raspberry Pi, some cables, various bits and pieces, and then found a great piece of software on the, uh, that allows me to upload things into the cloud. So it allows me to upload stuff that I make onto the web and then the screens can see it. So I approached one of the coffee shops, a guy called Kevin and his wife Dawn, and said, would you mind me putting a screen on your wall? And what's on it? What's going to be on it? What can we do? I haven't got time to look after it, etc. All the questions you can imagine that, you know, I'm busy, I'm doing this, blah, 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 but I trust you. I trust you because I know about you, I know what you do, I've seen you on Facebook, I've seen you on Twitter, I follow you on Facebook, I follow you on Twitter, I know what you stand for, I know your ethics, I know you're about sustainability, etc., etc. So it's a relationship. And it took me a good year before I asked that, that question. A lot better. So the situation we've got in the high street, we've got all these boarded up shops. I constantly get upset when I go to a place and turn around the corner and it's gone totally gone and you have no information what happened. Was it the rent? Was it that they just went out of style? What, you know, what happened? The general public have no idea. They have no idea where to look. And yet we're asking them to come back into the high street. For me, it's not about things just getting boarded up and pubs closing. We have lost all our social spaces. Yeah, en masse. We've tried to almost look at this as a business problem. And it's not. It's an engagement problem in terms of how we engage each other. Because we don't really talk to each other like we used to anymore. How many people see people on the bus constantly in phones, constantly walking down the streets in their heads and tablets? Nobody's talking to each other. Um, so, you know, footfalls down, people aren't going into the high street. For myself, a lot of my stuff I order online. Like I said, as a creative, I do like to get away from the desk and go to the local coffee shops and sit with people, physical people. I know that's scary. That you mean somebody into technology who's like actually physically looking at and touching people. Um, now, like, who are we waiting? You know, are we waiting for people to just rock up they, behind their till? You know, like, just yeah, they'll come in a bit. They'll be fine. 
Like, they're not doing anything proactively. Parking restrictions are obvious. You know, who wants to drive into town and pay six quid? I think somebody said it was six quid. To then go and shop something for three quid. I mean, it's just mental. I think the family business component is really, really important because they are your brand advocates of your cities, your towns and cities. They've been there for years. The guy who uh, runs Hartley's used to run um, um, a restaurant called Sinatra's. So you can imagine what that was like in the sort of 80s. He used to have all people come out of theatres and, you know, they'd be drunk and with cigars and ponder. And he'd get to know them. He'd get to know everything about them. And they'd have the table ready and the wine and everything else. He was creating an interactive experience. But he didn't know that's what it was. It's that loyalty connection of, oh, we should go and see Bob. Again, social spaces. We're, we're losing our social spaces. So it comes down to awareness for me. So for me, it was about community uh, crowdfunded per area. So what I did is after my first two prototypes that I put out on the walls and did all that, paid for myself. They liked it, they thought it was good. We had problems like how we're gonna scale this. I went on Kickstarter and raised two and a half thousand pounds for 10 screens. Uh, not expensive, but the community, if you care about your high street, the community pays for that to happen because the shops don't have it. The shops don't have that money. Um, so, I, you know, if, imagine going into one of these places and giving them technology to help promote their business for free. You've instantly just created a relationship that, well, why is it free? And then they want to know more. So for me, it wasn't about trying to make money off them. This is not a commercial venture. This is a back channel for a city. I've walked down this high street today. Two places don't take credit cards for breakfast. Like just, and they're probably because they're not informed about how to use mobile you know, card readers. And, oh no, they're too expensive. We've got to get through some of those myths. We put a high street in a barber's and a coffee shop because they were having a, it's like a hybrid because they were having couples go in and the, the lady was having her hair cut, and the guy was like, oh, well, I'll be back in a bit, then I'm going to get a coffee. And they were like, why are we losing a partner? We'll just have a coffee shop in here as well, and they'd sit and wait for the partner. But one of the things I wanted to do with Pie Street is now we've got a screen on the wall. How cool would it be at the end of that haircut to actually just say to, to, the, to, the, to the client, do you mind if I take a photo and stick this on my, on my website, on, my, on Facebook? So we had this whole idea of connecting up a button on the wall, three, two, one, take a photo, it goes on there, Facebook with the branding at the top of it. How many people react to stuff on Facebook? Oh, I should get my haircut. I totally forgot to get my haircut. Does all the heavy lifting and their marketing on their social channels without interrupting the flow of their business. Pie Street, like I said, 35 pound box, screen, cables, comes to about 150, 160 pound per price, which I don't think is a lot of money. Um, you're not taking a mega, mega risk by having this stuff. You can actually upcycle it and use it for something else. It's all on an SD card. You can take that SD card out and put something else in there. You can use it for whatever they want. So the process of it is that, you know, we, we submit, create, and upload content to the cloud. We can select different playlists and different groups and different screens. So we can do things like, um, and, and we can do pictures and video as well. So it's just, it can just be slideshows and pictures, or it can actually be fully fledged video. Every place has to have internet, by the way. They have to, do have to have internet, which a lot of them do, but we do have a solution for mobile as well. It's kind of scary, really, because I don't like the idea of loads of technology everywhere. I don't like the idea of loads and loads of screens everywhere, but we need a back channel now, because I don't know if you have this problem as well, but I don't find out about events in a timely manner. You know, I'd love to be able to organize myself and my schedule so that I get to take part in my local community, but I don't hear about it fast enough. So, you know, I see the screens as a bit of a digital word, word of mouth because what we found was we were putting little videos on there with no audio of, of our various shops. We had like five in our initial pilot, just with a little whiteboard with my name is Sara, etc. on it, and it would slide through to the next place and the next place. And people would see them on the screens and actually go and say, Oh, you're Sara. And they start a conversation, they had this sort of like warm front when they walked in because they knew something about them. So I found that was really interesting how word of mouth, which we all use, was amplified across all the stores. So even some of the stores were working together. Um, oh, I want some lunch today, but you know, a lot of these places go locally. Oh, I've had enough of, of, of chicken, I've had enough of that. We should get in touch with Harvest and get a, a buffet, see what they do. And then they would start to talk to each other. And they never actually talked to each other before. Um, things like time sensitive menus, so between 12 and 1, we can just put a slide which is very dependent on their, um, their place. Then after 1 o'clock it, it puts the rest of the, the, the content which is shared around on, on all the other screens. 
dynamic discounting. It might be we have a place in Derby called Bait. <coughs> it might be that she has like, I don't know, seven or eight scones that she wants to just get rid of that day because she's doing another bait the next day. We can do a slide back on the screen. We don't have to go to the premises. We can just do it all digitally from early. And this is phase one. This is more about them getting aware of technology on the wall. Because it is scary stuff. They don't know where that's coming from. They don't know how to interact with it. It's a new piece of furniture. Do I have to clean it? Do I, do I have to worry about it? How much power is it going to use? All of these things are relevant to their business. It's one of the things about the screens is that we can time events and things to happen. And we make, we make all the graphics for them for free. It's, for us, it's about you know, relationship with people on the high street. How do I give a shit about the shops on the high street? Well, I go there, I give them my loyalty by buying drinks there, by buying cakes there, by whatever it is. So why can't I help them introduce them to my world, which is this very fast-paced world that changes every day? <laughs> So for the venue, all it really costs at the, at the moment, and this is just to cover the, the, cover the cloud side of it, <coughs> once we get over sort of 130 screens, it comes down to like three quid. So it's, it, there is an initial monthly subscription, and what we've done with our pilots is we haven't charged them. We've just, we've took that on ourselves. We, we, you know, and I'm, I'm practically skint and homeless as it is, but like I, <laughs> I love to make this stuff, so that's why I, I put my money into it. Um, the Raspberry Pi units are very low power, they're like 5 watts I think it is, you could, you could literally run it off a solar panel. Um, majority of the people that we've tried to put it in, they've had internet. The only problems that we've had is that the internet is downstairs um, and we have to run a cable and drill it and all that sort of stuff. So that's where it gets, that's where you need a solid relationship with these people. You can't walk into the high street and say, hi, we have a free screen and we're going to drill a hole here and then we're going to put it on. No, you're not mate, I don't know who you are. One of the things out of Pi Street that I've tried to get across is that it's in three phases, and phase one is more about getting people used to the idea that there is now cheap technology to do this stuff. I want to get the local 18 to 24 year olds who, we're, we're working with a company called In Training, which is a nationwide company, and they take money from the government when they get people in placement. And I wanted to have a bunch of these 18, 24 year olds making slides for the different places, so they actually learn new skills like graphic skills and keynote, and you know, they actually get to see their work in the high street on the screen. But they do understand technology a little bit better than other generations in terms of where things go and how they, how they get there. So they've been helping me because if I get 100 stores, I can't possibly make that amount of content on my own. I need to be able to find a way to scale it. The reason why I asked you about Amazon earlier on is that I do it and I want it tomorrow. I want my stuff tomorrow. I want, I want my bits and bobs. I've got to go somewhere. I've got to go. I've got to go to work. I'm in London. I've got to do this. You know, we're, we're, we've all contributed to this, no matter if you want to look at it like that or not. So it's about giving a shit on the high street, and this is my way of doing that technology-wise. So partners that fit our ethics are people who release transparent paperwork in terms of where things are getting spent and how much is being spent. Um, you know, this thing about social media can be bad, it can be good, it can be bad. I see it as social media and anti-social media, and we haven't really seen anti-social media yet. That's coming big time. Um, and it's, it, it's leading up to a bigger conversation I want about value actually, that we don't have at all. So you get, you know, the, the ethic message for us is about how do we make it sustainable, how do we do the handover to the next generation, the next person, the next landlord in that, in that property. So phase one, the pilots in Derby, what we're doing is um, we're promoting CICs and food projects. We did a bit of work with the Secret Kitchen, Partly's heard about the food project, they had a client that over-ordered, um, said, oh, we don't want the sandwiches. So Kevin got in touch with me and said, you know that food project, where is it? Because I need to go and take them some sandwiches. So things that you would never do, they would never do that, they would never go see, searching that food project, but because it's there, because it's actually on the screen and they're watching it, it's kind of like, I should, you know, people doing good things, he took it and he took it up there and, and disseminated that food. Phase two is more about making the system open. So once we got to about 100, 130 screens in a specific town or city, we could do this over a number of towns and cities. And we're going to employ that technology and idea for our spaces. So for instance, 6 o'clock at night in a coffee shop, we might have a book club. Between 5.50 and 6, we might have on the screen that uh, early bird. And they scan the QR code, they get that badge. We get their email, we get their details, we pass it over to the retail space. They get to know who the people are really keen to come to the book club. But it's an initiative to collect the badges. People who are collecting stuff, so they can get a little free thing. This is where it gets really interesting for me. We have all these big data sets across the country. 
Uh, nobody knows what to do with them. We don't even know what we're asking for. You know, the council's got loads of it. We're not quite sure what bits we need. I think the UK is in a very, very good position to build a big data app store. You know, we've got Google App Store, we've got Apple, we've got an iOS App Store. What about an app store for big data where local developers build applications that are very specific to your high street? How awesome would that be? And then the stores pay 99p to have that as an add-on on their screen. So every hour they get an infographic telling them how many people have walked by, just to give them a little bit of a nudge to do something. That's a big thing for me. I can't handle that, not on my own. But I think that's an opportunity. Uh, collect those case studies, new locations and partners. Anybody want to work together? That'd be awesome. That's me. Thanks. <laughs>